Who Lakers coach J.J. Redick held his introductory press conference this week, used some colorful language when answering a question about dispelling some concerns or misconceptions. Take a listen. It's, it's been a really interesting uh, six weeks or so, um, just in terms of, uh, you know, being part of the engagement farming uh, industry. You know, it's been really interesting. Um, however, I, I, I don't really have a great answer for your uh, question because I, I really don't give a f Like, honestly, I want to coach the Lakers. I want to coach the team. I don't want to dispel anything. Wow, yeah, man. Metal. <laughs> Drew, your reaction. <clears throat> you guys know I don't curse. At all. All right? I'd love it if we as a society went back to a time where <laughs> cursing wasn't commonplace okay. in our music, in our movies, right. in our public discourse. Morning just meeting when Wild right. Testament I, I mean, that's really. not true. <laughs> that was that my but cursing is yeah. commonplace. Mm -hmm. Players do it at championship parades routinely. I know people, and I'm not even taking a shot at LeBron, I know people that left the Cleveland championship parade in 2016 because LeBron was cursing so much, all right? They curse on their podcasts, all right? Our political discourse, they're not cursing, but it's, it's not Sometimes professional anymore. Are. Yeah, yeah and it's not really professional. And the kids are hearing cursing anytime they want in music and everything like that. And so, look, as people might say, well, he's supposed to be a coach. Michael Malone, after they lost game seven, when he was asked about you're up by 20, he cursed. Wasn't that big of a deal. Deion Sanders this year won their games, actually after a win, cursed. Like, I, I, look, again, I, it's not that I condone what he said, but I'm just saying it's all over the place. And now we decide this is the well, one place I think that is going to, we're going to, this is where we're going to expect polite conversation in a press conference with I, a coach. I think that your introductory press conference as the coach, I think, is different than a celebratory drunken parade. Or a why? Or because it's because there's what do you mean why? The I same mean, like, reason the same reason why on the podcast YouTube show I do for my wife's store with my son I dress differently than on this show and use different language because a time and place for certain things. But they do have adults, shows like ours I, where people don't they, wear suits, they, no, right? And but they, they don't have shows like ours on TV. <clears throat> well, I guess there and might they be do. one where they're regularly dropping f bombs because. It's just kind of known what you're supposed to do in, in certain time and place. But I have a kind of different take on this, but I would like to hear Wilds. Okay, so my take is similar to yours that I think there's too much cursing. But I, and my reaction is to the reaction, which I kind of put into two different groups. Group over here, no big deal. Not like you're saying it's not a big deal, but like it's commonplace, get used to it, like, ah, yeah. it's fine. Over here, I'm kind of like the pearl clutchers, like heavens to Betsy. Mm. I'm over here where I don't think we should be cursing, or in J.J. Reddick should be cursing, because it should be saved for something special. And I said it's a little, a little bit like birthday cake. If you're having it all the time every day, when you really need it to signify something important, you're like, had this yesterday for lunch. Yeah. <laughs> so the... Examples I picked out here, an effective cursing. Tom Brady, about to win another Super Bowl, needs to fire his team up in the stadium up. Runs down, boom, drop one, great. David Ortiz, public curse, one of the most famous public curses, I'll stay in New England, after there was a terrorist attack in Boston Marathon, David Ortiz went up and said, this is our yeah. city. Right. It works, it's effective, it is. I've read a 1,000 Woj tweets, maybe 10,000. I've only read, seen him curse once. It's to dress down a grandstanding senator privately. Yeah. But that <laughs> works because he saves it. And then he uses it as an F-bomb. <laughs> it's not supposed to be an F-snowball. Yeah. Yeah. So using it just like flippantly, you either are trying to really make a statement, and then you're going to have no ammo left when Denver blows you out by 30 points in the first week of the season, or... You're, you're, you are using it so flippantly that you're not giving the, the moment 
Uh, are you treating it as seriousness? It feels seriously like he may deserves. have thought it was going to hit like oh, that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He, thought, he thought he it was going to hit. Was that much. But I, I, so here is my takeaway is actually not on the cursing. Oh. I don't think that's the important thing. I think the important thing, and it was so perfect, because Brew didn't know I was going to say this, and then he said, oh, J.J. used an odd term. We were talking about yeah. this earlier. Engagement farming. Brew, that's only an odd term to you because you don't live online. Folks, even follow me. folks who live online, <laughs> they're very familiar with what JJ's talking about. And forget the Doth protest too much part of the guy who went on first take and called Bob Cousy playing against plumbers and firemen. And then the late, great Jerry West reminded everyone, hey, your stats are online too, buddy. <laughs> um, he, you know who talks about engagement farming? The online world and the people who live online. And yes, there's a lack of self-awareness there, but that's a separate issue. The biggest issue is this. J.J. Reddick, in my opinion, did that press conference to impress Twitter. Oh, that's a good take. You know, Twitter likes, man, bleep the man. That's we can right. curse wherever we want. Engagement farming. Y'all suck. That's fine. I'm telling you right now, if you coach the Lakers to impress Twitter, you will not succeed. Do you know what he said before? Uh, you right he about swore? that. No. Because no one's talking about it. I've certainly heard everything. I've certainly heard everything. Oh, I, and he hasn't really heard it. He's read it and clicked right. it. And yeah. it, so that, to me, he does is the bigger concern. That's a fantastic take by Nick Ray. Um, I get all their points, and I'm going to address them each now, actually. Um, but I think what Nick Ray said is actually spot on. Um, again, for all you guys that say I just disagree with Nick and I'm a hater of his all the time, it's just not accurate. I just pick who I think what I think is the most accurate what's the most real and I think what Nick said is very accurate although Nick also understands engagement farming and social media as well but it's different because that's the business that he's in right in TV and media and all of that and JJ Reddick was in that business not now not anymore um but I'll, I'll take it one by one first I'll go to brew I understand what Brew is saying, right? Brew, we know that he's like a lot more conservative and reserved um, and, you know, doesn't curse, religious, all of that type of stuff, um, which is funny because he actually cursed. I don't want to say he cursed, but he said a, a word that you're not really supposed to say anymore, and he said it on TV, and then he actually had to go out and apologize. Nick Wright actually called him out. It was, it was, but it was like a, a an, an accident, and I don't hold his feet to the fire. So, but I just do think it is kind of funny that someone who's known to not curse and doesn't like to curse at all actually said something inappropriate when he was on first things first. But you know that that just happens. But I would say that I agree with what Brew is saying about, you know, cursing is too commonplace. And listen, I curse like crazy. I, I curse all the time in my regular everyday life. Even when I'm alone and I'm just talking to myself, the thoughts in my mind, I'm always cursing to myself, right? Like it's, it's there. But I do get that these more public spaces, you shouldn't be cursing. Um, whether you're out at a restaurant, whether you're talking to someone at the grocery store or when you're, you know, whether it's another person at the grocery store, or whether it's an employee, like, I don't think you should be cursing under those circumstances. And, and I will be more reserved and won't be cursing under those circumstances. Um, but, and, and I think like be a press conference and that's what Nick was saying, a press conference and an opening press conference at that is very different than the celebratory. We're out in public partying, celebrating that we just won a championship. Like that, that that's a completely different thing. Like you're supposed to be more buttoned up and proper and professional. And so again, it's not like cursing is like the worst thing in the world, but it just is like unnecessary. Not to mention He's saying, like, he wants to say, I don't care about the critics, yet you hear all about it, so you obviously care, right? You clearly had that line, like, kind of ready to go, so you care. And also, you have to care to a degree, because the fans make the world go round. The fans are what matter, the critics, the media, the everything. You only have a job and exist in the NBA because the NBA only exists because of the fans, because of the media, because of these shows, because of all of this. So yeah, like you can give a better answer just by, just by saying, I don't care. You could say, listen, I hear what the fans are saying or what some of the critics are saying. I, you know, I, I really don't care what they have to say, um, you know, 
but I, I understand what, what they're saying and, and why they're saying it, but you know, I'm excited to coach the Lakers and, 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 and prove them wrong. But to be honest, I'm really focused on how can I make the Los Angeles Lakers a better team and how I can win a ring as a head coach. That's what I'm out for. This is a dream come true, and I can't wait to, you know, to get going. In fact, I've already been, you know, hitting the ground running and ready to go. Right. Rather than this kind of like, I don't give a blank about all the about all the critics and the haters and let's go like right. And that's why Rollins made fun of him. Be like, I'm all punk rock because it's just like that. That's not your role as a head coach in that regard. It's just it's just it's just weird energy, quite honestly. And, and quite frankly, no professional athlete should be that way. The, the professional athlete should always be speaking to the fans. They should be, because that's what matters. That's why they make hundreds of millions of dollars, because of the fans. If the fans did not watch basketball, they would be the WNBA, okay? That's a fact. That's a reality. The only reason why they're not is because of the fans. So when you actively tell the fans, I don't give a blank about you, what are you saying then? You understand what I'm saying? So it just, it's just, it just falls on, on deaf ears to me when I hear that, and I just think, like, that's just... That's just nonsense. And it's always funny. On one breath, they say, it's all about the fans. It's all about the fans. And on the other breath, they say, I don't, I'm doing it for myself and for my team. And it's just like, okay. You know, they always talk out of both sides of their mouth. But then this is where I'll get to Wild's take very quickly because Wild says it should be saved. And in a way, he's right. This is what you're also taught actually when you're an actor or an improv or in comedy that you don't curse every five seconds, that the curse kind of needs to be earned and that the curse can be used as a laugh, right? Like you can be in like a funny scene in a movie or improv or sketch right and it'll be like if you if you curse the whole time it's not that funny but if you randomly say f that then it like gets a big laugh right and so they talk about that that needs to be earned that it needs to be more strategic how you do it and the master of this is danny mcbride he's he's the best at this um but I would say that that was that was supposed to be impactful from from JJ Reddick's eyes. Like that was supposed to be a a big moment. That was his birthday cake moment of being like, "I'm the coach here. I don't care about what any of this outside noise has to say. I'm here to be with the Lakers and win with the Lakers. Everything else is just nonsense and noise." Blank that. That's what he was getting at, right? That's what he that that so that was his birthday cake moment. But to now get to what Nick was saying about you know, Twitter and all of that, right. As someone who's obviously new in the whole content creation and, and YouTube videos and all of this, like that's what JJ Reddick was building before he became a coach. Like that's what he was building. He, he had, you know, multiple podcasts, multiple YouTube channels, Twitter, you know, he even responded to me, um, in the comment section before one time, because I ripped him up because he literally, was you know he was doing the the commentating for an nba game and i forget what it was but it was like some sort of controversy was was taking place where they said how do you feel about what so and so said and this was in the middle of the game and i was excited i wanted to hear what jj reddick had to say and instead he's like you know what you know mike or whoever the heck he was with he's like I'll save my thoughts for the podcast. And then like so-and-so like laughed and said, oh, oh, oh yeah. Oh, oh, oh. And then he didn't share his thoughts. And I was like, that's ridiculous. That's nonsense. You're there for entertainment. You're there to share your opinion. We're listening to this dialogue. When you watch a basketball game or a football game, the commentators are essentially a podcast. We like to hear the banter, the jokes, the 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 opinions, the stories of 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 years ago, what you think the future will look like, what you agree with what's what's happening with the refs, the players, the fans, the coaches. Like we want to hear your thoughts. And so to have that now reserved for a podcast, I thought was an absolute disgrace. An absolute disgrace. And it's just like, you know, and, and so that is kind of what Nick was saying and, and what, what JJ said about this engagement farming. Like he was he was pretty much promoting his podcast in the middle of an NBA game, which is just a disgrace to me. I think it was during the playoffs too. And not this last season, but the season before. And it was just like it was just wrong. And that is the world that he is in. And again, to some degree, I get it because you get sucked into it. Right. If I make a video, I made a video recently that got fifty thousand views and it was like, oh my God. How did I, you know, how did I do that? What did I talk about? What did I do? 
And then when you get another video that only gets like 5,000 views or 2,000 views, you're just like, you're seen as a failure. And you're just like, ah, you know, like, how do I get back? I want all my videos to get 50,000 views. And, and, you know, I want to get, I want to get them to get 100,000 views, 200,000 views. Like it's, it's, it becomes very addicting. And you, not only is it, it's, it's more than just an ego thing too. Like, it's not just like, I want all these views just for the sake of the views. It's because it feels good to make something that people want to engage with. Like sometimes engagement farming gets a bad rep and that's because sometimes it's very misleading, right? Like you have clickbait, you have, you know, disingenuous takes, you have takes that, and the, this is what people call Nick right out for doing, for making a take that he doesn't, because apparently he said this. I haven't heard it personally, but people like Travis O'Shea and, and a couple other people have told me that when he was on a podcast with Con Coward, he said that he makes takes that he knows will either, you know, get a lot of clicks or views or whatever. Um, that Those were his words, apparently. Uh, I don't know how accurate that is since I haven't heard it. And then apparently Colin had to like skip over and be like, oh yeah, okay, okay, okay. You know, like don't, essentially don't say the quiet part out loud. And so people take issue with that. Um, and that's why for me, like I don't do that. When I very first started this channel, people were trying to be like, oh, you're just trying to get clicks or, or trying to do hot takes because I think I said something negative about Baker Mayfield. And I'm like, no, I'm sharing my actual opinions here. I have no desire to make up opinions or try to be controversial or try to be a hot take artist at all. Like, I think we're at the point now where people want to see honest discussion whether you agree with it or disagree with it i want it to be honest that's why i like a colin cowherd because at least i know that even if i disagree with him wholeheartedly about a point at least it feels to me that he's doing it genuinely that that is his actual honest opinion at least in that moment and that i can respect and that is exactly what i try to bring here as well but with that said it's a, not a great feeling when you share something and not a lot of people engage it, whether it be the views are down, whether it be the comments are down and there's not an interesting dialogue back and forth, whether the likes or you get a lot of um, thumbs down, whatever it may be. And so it feels good to make a video that you can see hundreds of comments, hundreds of likes, tens of thousands of views, and you can see people really enjoyed what you put out there. And to me, that feels really good because I started this because I wanted, because I thought, first off, this space was missing this, number one. And number two, I, I like to entertain. I like to engage with people, but I don't want to farm engagement, right? I don't, want it to, I don't want it to be disingenuously or do certain things that I know will only drive engagement, and that's why I'm doing it. To me, that's putting the cart before the horse or getting lost for the forest for the trees. Um, but I understand why people, especially someone who's a high performer like a J.J. Reddick, that's the side of things that he's going to get lost into. And, and again, he aired out his frustrations before about it, where he was like, I make a video talking about the X's, of o X's and O's, which is clearly his passion, and yet no one watches it. But then he makes a video about, you know, who's who farts louder lebron james or steph curry and that gets millions of views and he was just like he aired out his grievance on first take with regards to that and was very frustrated about it and and i get where he's coming from but it's it, it's just the way it goes that it's just you if you want to be an entertainer then you have to find what people are entertained by and if they're not entertained by what you are producing that doesn't mean that the that the viewers and the fans are wrong they're just not interested in it and if you want to create a community a smaller community that will grow maybe progressively that are interested in what you have to do well then that's what you just have to accept that and then it's a smaller market it's a smaller niche but at least it's what you want to do if you just want to talk about the x's and o's but you're going to get significantly less engagement well then cultivate that community of people that actually also only care or care more about the x's and o's that's the reality so i i just think that this whole conversation, because I, I know we're kind of going on so many different angles with this because uh, Nick definitely, I feel like, opened up the door when he talked about engagement farming and who and who J.J. Reddick is. Because when you say that that's who J.J. Reddick is, to me, it's he's making a claim about J.J.'s personality. Because he's like, if you're going to coach the Lakers based on Twitter and engagement, you're in trouble. I don't believe he's going to do that necessarily, but I think he will be the first coach that the NBA has had that will be significantly more sensitive to what the conversations are being had on these shows, in the comment section, any of the various social media things. And it will be interesting to see how he watch, you know, how he um, engages with that, right? Like how, how he 
um, how he manages it. You know, does it affect him? Does it does it get to him? Does he make mistakes because of it? I, I think it's 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 all um, interesting to kind of break down and, and kind of contemplate. But it is funny to hear Nick and and them talk about engagement farming because you know that that's what sports media as a whole is, right? You're constantly trying to grab people's attention, and that's why you have the hot takes and all of this type of stuff, and everyone always has to give such big grandiose takes you know brock purdy is the worst quarterback in the nfl brock purdy is the best quarterback in the world like you're not allowed to say i think brock purdy's a pretty good quarterback um not elite um not great yet but maybe maybe can get there one day it's like nope no one wants to hear that you got it it's got to be the extremes lebron james is better than michael jordan and it's not even close not you know what lebron james and michael jordan are both really really great it's hard to compare them they played in different eras they have different skill sets and honestly like i think in some situations lebron would be better and in other situations michael jordan would be better not a lot of people want to hear that i'm the opposite I'm taking the different route where I'm trying to build a community of people that want to have a conversation around nuanced conversations that are interested in hearing. Yeah, I think so-and-so is pretty good. I think he could be great, but I don't know. He could also drop down and maybe only be average and people not and people be okay with that because that's real life. That's more accurate. And I hate the lying. And that's why, you know, JJ Reddick, I think he's being disingenuous when he says, I don't give a blank because it's like, you're not being authentic. Of course you care. These people all, right, because he literally said that he's heard it all. And it's like, you would only hear it all if you actively were searching for it and looking for it and digesting it and reading it. So, you know, I, I'm a big, big proponent of just being as genuine and honest as you can. And maybe the audience may not be as big and the views might not be as high, but I think it's a lot more valuable, a lot more uh, real and authentic. But those are just my thoughts. We took a lot of different places for this conversation. So let me know what your guys' thoughts are. What do you think about the cursing, the engagement farming, JJ Reddick? Is he going to be a good coach, a bad coach, whatever it may be? Let me know in the comments below. I read every single comment. So whether you agree with me or disagree with me, either way, let's get in some discussions. Let's get in some fights. But ultimately, let's just have some fun. And please do consider subscribing. We are building an amazing community here, and I would absolutely love to see you part of it. I want to build something that we all genuinely feel connected to, something that we're really excited to be part of. I think we're well on our way to doing it. And please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, as it really does help with the visibility and the algorithm. Thank you so much, and see you next time.